Hey, welcome to the Create a Life That Is Beautiful podcast. I'm your host, Letitia Ringe, and this is the space to be for high vibe people looking to create a beautiful life and business. Let's do this. Welcome back to the podcast, my beautiful friends. I'm Letitia Ringe, your coach, and today we are talking about conscious desires. What do I want in a relationship? what the role of desires are, the relationship between desire and attractiveness, shadow desires, and suppression. So if you've been wondering, what do I want in my relationship? What do I want in my life? How do I figure it out? How do I know this is what I truly want? Or isn't it better to completely surrender and be open and not desire anything? This episode is for you. In fact, having clear desires within a romantic relationship is so important that it is actually one of the five pillars of my happy conscious love framework, which is what I use to support my clients in creating the thriving romantic relationship they desire, no matter where they are right now along their relationship journey, single or in a relationship. And speaking of happy, conscious love, I want to remind those of you who perhaps missed last episode or haven't yet gone and downloaded Happy Conscious Love. This is a free, short program available to everybody in the community. You can access your copy at LetitiaRinge.com forward slash start. And in this program, you will find a training that will take you through the Happy Conscious Love process so that you know exactly what you need to be working your way through in order to create create the thriving relationship you desire using my coaching framework. And then it will also take you through a guided ritual to help you step into conscious commitment towards the relationship you truly desire. So I recommend you go and download that right away at LetitiaRange.com forward slash start. Now, today we're going to dive more deeply into desires. I'm going to take you through five points about desires that are really, really important for you to be aware of in order to answer all of those questions we opened today's episode with. By the end of the episode, you're going to know exactly what the role of having desires in your life and within your romantic life really looks like and how to start moving towards them in a conscious way so that desires are working for you and actually making you more attractive and are also evolving you as a person. Sound good? Let's dive in. So our first point is about the point of desires. This is a really, 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 really important concept to understand. The point of having desires is not to actually attain the desires. I know, isn't that so wild? (laughs) The point of a desire is that it is taking you somewhere. Think of your desires as a muse, as a map, as a way to get you somewhere that you need to go in order to access and explore more deeply yourself. So the point of desires is that your desires are a muse. They're there to inspire you, to guide you, to lead you, to take you somewhere. But you must trust your desire in order to do this. And what most of us do is we judge our desires or try to suppress them or hide them because we think they're not good enough or we think maybe I don't want to go where this desire is going to take me. But where it's taking you may not be where you expect it to be. Another reason a lot of people avoid having desires is because they don't want to be disappointed if the desire isn't fulfilled. Well, this is great news because the point isn't to fulfill your desires. Your point is to follow the call of where they're taking you and discover where that is along the process. But more than discovering what the ultimate end destination is of that desire, the point is what you learn about yourself through the journey. As soon as your desire changes and evolves, you will be able to ditch the previous desire and go with the new evolved version of your desire. But so many of us are all spinning around being confused about what we actually desire because we're sitting there analyzing and overanalyzing them because we're looking at where we think they're going to take us rather than actually experiencing the journey. 
The other piece on this point is that the point is to not be attached to the desire itself. This is true for anything that you're trying to create in your life through conscious manifestation. As soon as you become attached to fulfilling or attaining the thing itself, you create resistance, which gets in the way of actually bringing to life the desire. And more importantly, it makes the journey really, really not fun. (laughs) That's the best way I've got to describe it. It means you're graspy and desperate and you come from a place of lack and scarcity as if where you are isn't good enough, but over there is the answer. And so until you can get over there, you will not allow yourself the happiness that is available to you right now. Happiness is a choice and a decision that you can find in every single moment. So attachment is what taints your desire. It's also what stops you from actually bringing them to life. And it's it can be what is actually making your relationship with di- desire itself something that you want to avoid. So the way to think about desire is then that the point of desire is that it's guiding you somewhere. The point is what you learn about yourself through that journey. Think of desire as more as a journey of self-discovery and exploration and even the path to a deeper ownership of yourself. That's the point. And being satisfied with where you are and open to new experiences through allowing your desire to take you there is the point. That's the path. So that's great news because we can all let go of needing to attain our desires and instead we can get curious about where is this desire taking me and we can feel satisfied right now about our romantic life and also about our lives as a whole because that's the point to be satisfied throughout the whole journey and most of that is really about mindset. Okay, the second point about desires is we need to speak about how do we even get clarity on our desires. So there are many things that cloud our desires, which means we have no idea what we want. And maybe you even feel like I have felt many times throughout my life that you're floating in the abyss. You're just floating through life, going with the flow. (laughs) Life is kind of bouncing you from one point to the next. And then you look back and you think, did I actually even ever want any of this? Was this even the life I wanted to create? Was this a relationship I wanted to create? Did I ever at any point actually desire this? Or were there signs along the way that actually I desired something else, but I didn't allow myself to one, believe that those desires were realistic. And two, maybe I even just judged the desires and thought, ew, I don't want to be known as the person who desires this thing. Because we made judgments about where we thought the desire was going to take us rather than being open to it showing us what we were going to discover about ourselves in the process. So I've definitely been there throughout my life and that is when I have an unconscious relationship to my desires. It's where I'm not giving it the time and space to be noticed, to be witnessed, to be held. And therefore, the desire can then work its magic and actually take me where it wants to take me. Now, the reason that our desire might be being clouded is also because of protective patterns. So the protective patterns that we developed usually as children or going through certain sometimes traumatic or uh, or just pivotal moments in our life, we develop these protective patterns to protect us. And they are the very patterns that generally block a person's core desires. It's very interesting. So your protective patterns that are existing right now across your life and also within your romantic life and relationships are also the very thing that can block your clarity when it comes to what your desires even are. Once you clean that up and you turn your protective patterns into connective patterns instead, which is something that I support all of my clients with in my conscious relationship coaching program, then clarity simply arrives. You no longer have that cloud, that block, that boundary that is stopping you from actually being able to see and hear and receive your clarities. Something else that blocks clarity 
about your desires is attachment. So when you're so fixated on attaining the desire itself or something working out in a very specific way, you have a very closed focus, which doesn't allow you to open up and actually see what the desire truly is, or even want to pursue that desire because you know that in the process, you're just going to feel terrible and beat yourself up and be in lack and scarcity. That's not the point of desires. As we discussed before, it's about being there for the journey journey and not the attainment or destination. Another piece that blocks desires is our own judgment. We judge the desire itself. Maybe your desire is something that's considered more taboo, or maybe it's actually coming from a part of your shadow and and you don't want that to be expressed or explored because you're judging it. And so you suppress your desire. And we'll talk more about the consequences of that later in this episode. Lack of space is also something that could be clouding your judgment. Uh, For those of you who have worked with me in the past about working with your cycle in terms of the menstrual cycle or the moon cycle or the creative cycle, we all know that where it all begins is in that space where you have space to receive. And space is really just about space that allows you to notice things, right? So it's what allows you to have awareness and to receive ideas and inspiration and notice what you're curious about. All of these are where desires begin. And so without space in your life, if you're not giving yourself space to be with yourself and to be alone with yourself at all, then it's very unlikely that you're going to notice what your desires are or what those pieces of curiosity are, which then turn into desire and even passion. So another thing to be aware of is that also what could be blocking your clarity around desires is feeling overwhelmed. The paradox of choice where there's just so many different options and paths and you can't possibly pursue them all. And maybe they even contradict each other. And so you get really overwhelmed about what you should even commit to in terms of your desires. So you choose nothing at all, right? And then there's a lack of commitment to your desires, which means maybe you're aware of what some of your desires are, but you're so overwhelmed on which ones to pursue that you don't move forward, right? Because because you're so overwhelmed on, on what to take and which are the real deep desires rather than the surface level. Usually this predicament is actually just the result of a protective mechanism, which is trying to protect you from from moving forward, expanding, growing, evolving. It keeps you safe and in your comfort zone. It could be a result of a protective pattern, maybe an attachment style. And therefore you stay where you are feeling really frustrated, probably confused, overwhelmed, and not pursuing a path forward. Okay. The third thing to know about desires is that having desires is extremely attractive. This is for all of us. In its feminine form, desires are radiant. They make you radiant as a person. And when we're talking about being attractive, particularly when your partner is someone who has that masculine core or wants to primarily be within their masculine energy within the relationship, they are going to be very attracted to you in your feminine energy. And that is all about your radiance. What makes you radiant is being inspiring. Desires are inspiring. Let's just think about this for a moment. Have you ever been around someone who says, I have no desires. I have nothing that I really want to create in life. I have nothing that I'm really like wanting or going after or that lights me up. That's boring. Yeah, that is boring. (laughs) And it's usually not creating any energy to be around. Instead, you're attracted to the person who's like, how amazing is this? How great is this? How cool is this? I love this. The person who's able to see the beauty in what is around them they're going to have most likely a lot of desires and that is inspiring. It gives us all energy. In fact, it can be so intoxicating. We walk away feeling lit up ourselves. That is feminine inspiration. 
So see how the point is also about the energy that having those desires creates. This is a gift to everyone around you. It inspires, it uplifts. And so if we think about this same idea in the context of our romantic relationships, the point with your partner is not for them to fulfill your every desire. It is truly for them to witness you owning your desires. You can, of course, fulfill your own desires. You can be so meticulous in your embodiment of those desires. That's a beautiful thing. It's a part of self-love, self-exploration, self-discovery. And your partner also, because of your desires and their own desires coming together and creating a match, they also might participate in fulfilling some of your desires. But the point isn't to fulfill them all. The point isn't to be dependent on your partner because the point isn't to attain them. It's about the energy it gives you in having them and where it points you, where it takes you and what you learn about yourselves in the process. Now, we can also think about desires in terms of masculine energy. Think about a person within their masculine energy. If they do not know where they are going, there is no sense of direction. There is no clarity. That is not sexy and it's definitely not masculine energy. Masculine energy is about commitment, focus, discipline. In order to be expressing your masculine energy in a conscious way, you need to be aware of where you're going and even more importantly, why you're going there. You need to know what your mission is, what your purpose is. And so in order to do that, you need to know what your desires are. So a more masculine energy term for the same concept could be goals, commitments, outcomes, or even intention. And in fact, I love to think about intentions as the marriage of masculine and feminine energy in terms of maybe feminine being more about desires and masculine being more about purpose or goals. And then we've got intentions. But as I've mentioned before in my episode about moving with intention, if you haven't listened to that, go back and listen to it. I think it doesn't really matter what you call it. All of them are just giving you a point of focus in order to make life easier. So you know, hey, oh, I'm going to move forward. If this thing over here is meeting one of my desires, one of my goals, my purpose, that's like the signpost saying, hey, over here, this is the pathway forward. And then you move towards that thing, right? Until you have some sort of clarity that tells you, hey, actually, that's not the way anymore. That's not the desire. That's not the goal. That's not the intention. That's not the signpost. And when you've got that clear clarity, which will just arrive, then you pivot. Okay. And until then you just keep moving towards because it's about the journey and not the destination. Now, again, if you don't have desires, if you've got no intentions, if you've got no goals, it is boring to be around. You need to do the work and give yourself the time and space to figure it out, to receive some of that inspiration from yourself so you can go out and be inspiring in the world just because you've got the desires rather than actually fulfilling them. There's really a no risk situation here. The only loss is in not having the desire themselves because it really doesn't generate any energy for you. Now, there is one other risk here, and that is if you're someone who doesn't have your own desires, you don't have your own goals, you don't have your own intentions, whatever word you want to use, you could also be more prone to being in codependent relationships because you're like, hey, uh, you complete me. Let's follow all of your desires. Let's just do everything that you want to do. And maybe you morph into your partner and become so dependent on them. Or maybe you both are doing the same thing and you morph into each other. You don't know who you are anymore, where you start and where you end. And that becomes really, really heavy and a big burden on the relationship. And then one day you realize I need to figure out who I am. They say the same thing. And then you need to go through that journey of figuring out what your desires ultimately are. So let's just skip all of that and figure it out right now. Let's give ourselves space to receive. Let's acknowledge the role of desires within your life and allow yourself to start opening up to actually noticing what yours are. Something else on this particular point to know is, again, as I mentioned earlier, it's not your role to fulfill your partner's every desire and it's not their role to fulfill 
all of your desires. And the great news is it's not the point at all to have any of the desires fulfilled. So we don't need to put that burden upon each other. The point for you personally with your desires, though, is for you to own them, for you to have them, for you to be witnessed in having them. And for you personally to pursue your desires, to embody them in all the ways that you can right now, given your circumstances right now, in all the ways that are showing up for you right now, because of what you'll learn about yourself in the process, because of where they're guiding you. And you can think of your desires as creative checkpoints. They're opportunities to create something in your life. And when you and your partner come together on a desire, you create something together, which is probably different to what you first expected. And you can think about that in terms of your relationship with the universe. Yes, you're taking the next step forward on your desire, and then you create something that you never would have gotten to experience had you not had the desire initially. So desires are all about what you learn about yourself through the process. Now, the fourth thing to know about conscious desires is that we have surface level desires and then we have your truest, deepest desires. Now, most of us are working with the surface level desires if we have clarity on what our desires are at all, because we haven't given ourselves the appropriate time and space to actually explore what those truest, deepest desires could be. And we also have our protective patterns, uh, attachment styles, attachment to the outcome itself running the show and everything we spoke about earlier in the episode that clouds your clarity around desires. So we land, if anywhere, on the superficial stuff. Now, what that pathway looks like is that we then pursue the superficial desires, realize once we attain them or along the journey of trying to attain them that, hey, this isn't actually what I wanted. And then that's what prompts us to actually do the work to figure out what those truer, deeper desires actually are. And that could be when we start to take more time and space to allow ourselves to receive. Maybe we go and get coaching support or maybe we start journaling or we give ourselves ways to support ourselves to go inward and to have those conversations with ourselves and get that clarity from ourselves. So you want to find your truest, deepest desires, not the superficial desires, though if you do pursue the superficial stuff, it'll just get you to your deeper desires and anyway, ultimately in the end. So don't fret. You might be there right now. But my recommendation is that with this knowledge, you start to give yourself time and space to explore your truest, deepest desires. Now, as I mentioned earlier in my coaching framework, the first two pillars of my coaching framework take you through a process in order to clear that space so that clarity simply arrives. And that's the process I take my clients through in the Conscious Relationship Coaching Program. If you want to know more about that, you can go to letitiaringe.com forward slash coaching. And if you'd like to know more, you can book an application call with me where we will discuss what that coaching program would look like for you specifically. Now, the fifth and final thing to know about conscious desires is a juicy one. It's all about shadow and taboo desires. So your desires can be suppressed by you out of judgment of yourself. And they can also, therefore, be tainted because of that judgment. So a really great example here is to think perhaps about your intimacy or sexual desires. The desire to be ravished, for instance, or to ravish is a very, very common desire. People who are coming more from that masculine energy may have the desire to ravish their partner or they could be using the language to take their partner, to penetrate their partner, whereas the person coming from the feminine energy lens will want to be ravished. They might want to surrender to, they might want to be taken. There's lots of different ways to describe this desire. Now, if you are judging this desire, maybe to have this complete surrender or this complete control or charge, you might find yourself actually on a more extreme point pole of that desire. You could be completely denouncing the act altogether, or you might be looking for for 
fulfillment in other less satisfying or even energy draining ways, and in some cases, even more dangerous ways. For example, you could be filling yourself up with food instead, shopping, gossip, alcohol, etc. Or you could be checking out with TV or porn or even work or maybe like day to day to do's and worries about money, etc. So the point is, remember, not always to even fulfill the desire itself, but it is to acknowledge your desires, to own them. And in my experience and what I've seen with my clients and through many stories throughout my life is that those who suppress their desires, they usually come knocking in bigger, louder, and sometimes very destructive ways. So it's better to own them. And this is a beautiful exercise that you can have to develop deeper intimacy, connection, and also radical honesty honesty and vulnerability with your partner. Simply talking about what your desires are, not with the point of getting your partner to meet them or fulfill them or even for you to do the same, but to simply own them. Yeah, this is something that I have felt curious about, inspired about, interested, pulled towards, and I'm owning that because otherwise they will own you. Another point to make here is that sometimes because we're so attached to our desires, which will be showing up if you're judging your desires too, that's really just a form of attachment, you might also be experiencing some grief around your desires having not been met. So it can also be a really beautiful practice to work with that grief, to release that grief so that you can also allow yourself to open up and get clear and to have that place of non attachment with your desires, which makes your relationship with desires itself so much better. And then generally that would move perhaps the judgment about desires that you might be experiencing right now. Some other examples of some desires that you might be looking upon with judgment is the desire for burning desire from your partner or even to feel that within yourself. And so an example of how that might be showing up in a way that's not actually creating energy for you or could even be something that is draining you is you might have this desire for burning desire and rather than going out and owning that and talking to your partner about that or even just owning that within yourself or even looking at, well, how could I uh, work with that with just myself here You or express that with my partner, you might be looking for that in TV, right? So there are lots of different programs out there. They're all working to meet so many of our desires. One of this is the desire for burning desire or to feel seen and heard or to have a a very present partner. And this shows up in so many of the programs that are available on TV, on Netflix, etc. And so you go and get that desire met through the watching of TV instead of actually embodying embodying that desire within your life. So you live vicariously through TV rather than allowing the desire to take you somewhere, allowing the desire to create something within you. And if if even just to create energy within you, when we then have it met through TV or in a way where we're not an active participant with that desire, it's not going to have the same result. You're not going to be super inspiring. You're not going to be creating energy. You're not actually truly owning it. And instead it's just, it's almost just getting like sucked away in, in this, this is like energy that's there that could be creating something that's just getting sucked away in uh, this passive relationship, right? With the TV or even seeking really extreme material because you're not owning what was the seed of that desire or the or the, even the deeper desire beneath whatever is showing up for you right now superficially. You might also have a desire for spiritual intimacy and connection, and you might be judging that because you don't see yourself as spiritual or you think it's too feminine. And so again, you seek to have that desire fulfilled in ways that don't actually meet the desire itself. They're not actually allowing you to learn more about yourself. And instead, your energy is just being like sucked away, probably through something like drugs or alcohol or TV, like just enter whatever your poison is. That is where that energy is going instead of to yourself. So 
There are desires that might come from your shadow. There are desires that might seem more taboo and it's important for you to acknowledge what they are and remember that it may not be about fulfilling the desire itself, but through actually just owning them and where that takes you in your ownership of yourself. All right, my beautiful friends. So finally, I want to leave you with how do we then move from unconscious to conscious desire? So we get it. We've gone through the four, five things you need to know about conscious desire. We get it. We know we want desires in our life. We're going to start becoming more aware of what ours are. How do I do that? Well, a story you might like to start telling yourself so that you can move into this place of inspiration and ownership and therefore Give yourself time and space and allow yourself to be on the journey, not the destination and release that attachment is to tell yourself stories like my desires are beautiful. My desires are guiding me. Witnessing your desire is a gift. Stories are what change us from conscious to unconscious. These are the thoughts we tell ourselves, the beliefs we have, the way we look at the world around us, the perspective we choose to look at the world around us with. When you shift your perspective, you allow yourself to generate different emotions within you that lead you to taking different actions. So we always want to start here and that's where you can start today. Start telling yourself a new story about desires that honors them and also inspires you to own your desires and to appreciate the desire you see in others. If you want to know more about my happy conscious love process, head to LetitiaRinge.com forward slash start. That process will take you through a guided ritual, which will actually have you commit to the desires you're aware of right now. And it will put you into conscious commitment, which will have you moving forward and creating and moving towards the relationship you desire rather than staying where you are and creating from a place of unconscious desire, which I call unconscious commitment. All right, my beautiful friends, head to LetitiaRinch.com forward slash coaching for that. And I will see you in the next episode. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to the Create a Life That Is Beautiful podcast. I'm your host, Letitia Ringe, and I appreciate you so much. If you would like support one-to-one as you up-level your life, business, or relationships in a conscious, intentional, and love-focused way, then head to LetitiaRinge.com forward slash coaching. I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye. 